The world's population is growing at a phenomenal rate. Every year it increases by 75 million people. And by 2050, there could be as many as 9.6 billion living here on Earth. Now, more people mean a greater need for transport links like roads, and today there are a lot of them. For example, in the US, only 83% of the landscape is no more than one kilometre away from a road. Here in the UK, there are more than 395,000 kilometres of roads. And that's a lot of roads for a small group of islands. But what do all these roads mean for wildlife? Let's find out. So how do roads affect wildlife? Well, first of all, they fragment landscapes. Roads aren't the friendliest places, and this means many animals are reluctant to cross. Roads are also a source of light, noise and chemical pollution, which means these habitats around roads are not usually as good quality, and therefore less desirable for wildlife. Building more roads usually leads to more human development, such as houses, commercial areas and more agriculture. As well as destroying more habitats for wildlife, more development can increase the chances of non-native and invasive species spreading. And of course, we mustn't forget the most direct effect of roads, roadkill. So in general, roads are bad for wildlife. And over the past 20 years, there's been an increasing amount of research exploring the effects of roads. Now, whilst most of this research has been concerned with terrestrial animals, until recently, there was little research exploring the effects of roads on one particular group of mammals, bats. I went to talk to Professor John Altrincham, who's been exploring the effects of infrastructure on bat populations for the past eight years. So the first thing was just a really conceptually very simple experiment. You start next to a, a motorway, you walk away from the motorway, and you record bat activity, and you see what happens. And what we found was, first on the M6 in, in Cumbria, was that there was a huge decline in bat activity as you started 1.6 kilometres away, and you walked close to the road. And we did this at lots of spots along the M6, mm -hmm. did a fairly complicated statistical analysis, and the evidence was absolutely incontrovertible. Really substantial effect. We repeated it on another motorway, we've since done it on A roads, and we've done it on railways as well. And we don't always see the effect, we always see it on motorways, we see it on lots of A roads, we see it on, lots, on, on some uh, railway lines as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, you get a drop in activity of bats as you approach the road, but you also get a drop in species diversity. Mm -hmm. So some species like roads even less than other species. So, like other animals, Roads have negative implications on bat populations. They even affect some species more than others. The trouble is, roads are inevitably going to be built. So it's the job of conservationists to minimise their impact. And this is where mitigation comes in. In conservation, mitigation is when you reduce the negative effects of developments on wildlife. When it comes to roads and bats, the most common type of mitigation are crossing structures such as overpasses, underpasses, bat gantries and green bridges. The aim of bat road mitigation is to maintain flight paths across the landscape so bats can access resources and habitats. I talked to Dr Anna Berthanusen about the effectiveness of this mitigation who along with Professor John Altrincham has studied the effects of roads on bats for the past seven years. So we looked at um, a whole variety of different mitigation structures for bats over roads throughout the UK and um, we found quite mixed results. Sadly, the majority of the structures we looked at weren't effective or they weren't meeting their purpose, but there were some positive findings as well. So we did find that underpasses can be successful if they're built correctly and green bridges also have considerable potential as well, but we do need to do more research and we need to build on the evidence that we've got to see actually what works and what doesn't work. In fact, purpose-built wire bat gantries are essentially ineffective. Bats usually don't fly near them, or if they do, they fly at car height, increasing their risk of collision. 
Mitigation is a legal requirement in many countries. In principle, if something's being built, there should be no net loss to the environment. Species like bats are declining in number, so it's important that we protect them, and mitigation is meant to help. But the system is flawed. In the past, bat mitigation has been designed and constructed with little or no evidence. On top of this, any mitigation that has been built has not been sufficiently monitored to see if it actually works. Yet, mitigation is still a legal requirement, and a legal and construction industry has been built around what is essentially a box-ticking exercise. So where do we need to go? Well, for bats and effective conservation strategies, we need to look at the evidence. Understanding bat behaviour and ecology is key to creating effective mitigation, and monitoring is key to finding out how effective it is. It goes without saying that money could be saved if time was spent exploring the evidence and less time was spent ticking boxes. Now, although we focused on bats, they're one part of a bigger picture, as Anna and John explained. The issues that we found aren't just limited to bats. They aren't just limited to roads and rail developments. They're applicable to all different types of wildlife and all different types of developments. So we really need this kind of shift towards a more evidence-based approach throughout conservation. Um, we need to bring science and conservation practice together to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of, of conservation and mitigation. And there's now building up a body of evidence that shows that roads affect lots of terrestrial mammals, which you would expect, everything from little voles up to, up to, uh, up to wildcats and, mm -hmm. and cougars and, and, and deer. Um, but it also affects amphibians, reptiles, butterflies, bees, there's evidence accumulated, and birds, so the evidence is accumulated, no matter whether you fly or crawl or whatever, roads can, af can affect them. That's all for this episode, but if you want to find out more about John and Anna's work, we've got information on our website and in the links in the description below. Catch you later.